Hello, everybody. Losing water before bed burns 46,000 two weeks. If you are struggling to lose weight and you're over 25, then you need to hear this. Oh, hello. Hope you guys are doing well. This is Jason Robinson, Illustration by Design. Hopefully this is working. You guys can hear me. It is about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And... I'm going to start drawing Johnny Lawrence or Billy William Zabka, depending on uh, your preference. Either or, uh, I'm going to be drawing him today. Actually, this whole week, I'm going to be drawing people from the Karate Kid series or Cobra Kai. And uh, today I'm going to draw William Zabka slash Johnny Lawrence. Tomorrow I'm going to draw uh, John Kreese. And then uh, on... Uh, Friday, I'm going to draw uh, Mr. Miyagi. Uh, I'm going to skip Danny Russo, 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 LaRusso, Danny LaRusso, just because I don't find that interesting looking. But uh, the other guys have cool faces, they're cool characters, so those are the three that I'm going to be drawing this week. So I hope you guys are doing well and uh, everything's going awesome for you. Um, trying to think. Oh, yeah, that was a, uh, what you just saw was an ad for Secret Comics Presents, the uh, comic book that I drew uh, a few months ago and uh, was uh, 
was uh, crowdfunded and sold to uh, to a bunch of people, and uh, there are still copies available. So if you want a copy, you can buy it by clicking the link down below or clicking the link up there in the chat up in the corner, and uh, yeah, order a copy or five. You can also get buy copies with a head sketch of the character of your choice by me inside. All copies are signed by myself, and uh, and about half of them are, are signed by the author, Nasser Rabadi. So just let me know. Uh, also, if this is your first time here, welcome. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel, and please make sure to hit the bell for notifications of future videos. Because as I just said, I will be drawing other characters of the people in the coming days and weeks to come. So uh, let's see, what else? Uh, I think that's it. I'm going to start drawing. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. This live stream will last about two hours till midnight. Um, because I am uh, limited on my uh, what is it, stream yard time. So I have to divvy it out judiciously. And uh, I think I only have about three hours left. So two hours tonight and then one hour tomorrow, which will extend as long as I want, just because of the way stream yard is set up. So uh, tomorrow will be a longer stream, but tonight it's only two hours. Okay. Hey, Vimri, how you doing? Good seeing you. Eric Hawkins is here. Cobra Kai. Yes. Yes. So I got to get started so I can get as much done as possible before the time is up. Let me see here. Um, there we go. Got that down. Do I have some water? I think I have some water. Um, I'm fine for now. I will get some more as I need it. And I got I got this interesting thing my wife got. It's called salmon smoked maple strip. It's like it's like salmon jerky. So I'll probably try this halfway through the stream at some point. So I like the packaging. Nice design. Anyway, with that said, I'm going to play my funky music, and uh, we'll get to it. Let's see. Make sure I have enough space to put in Johnny Lawrence's head. There we go. That's good. Exactly, Jeff Fox. It's funky music, but I'm playing it instead. Hold on. Let's see. There we go. Move that aside. All right, let's see if I can get this. Yes, I do. Uh, adjust my eyes. All right. That's okay.
Just get that to the everything you have. Jack Curtis is here with some odd spam. Well, I hope uh, you subscribe to the channel, Jack. Don't have to remove your spam. My apologies. Hey, thanks, Eric. I appreciate it.
Eric Hawkins says these freaking spammers are everywhere. Yeah, yeah, they are. What can you do? What can you do?
What new horizons can we look now? Where are tomorrow's opportunities? The frontiers of the future are not on any map. But now, what's ahead of us? Oh, 
Juggernaut versus Batman, who wins? Probably Batman because he's got that uh he's got that editor armor. So you know, that Batman fighting the Hulk and, and Batman wins. I would say that Batman beats the Juggernaut too. Yeah, Batman beating beating pretty much anyone. How you doing, Yash? Hope you had a good weekend and are staying out of trouble. How's the weather up in uh, up in Alabama? Is it freezing? I'm gonna try some of this uh, smoked salmon strip. See if it's actually good. Mm. If I can get it open. Ah! Snapped. Hmm. How do you crack this open? Let me get my knife. Doesn't look the most appetizing, but we'll see. We shall see. Oh. It's tough. It's uh. Mm. It actually tastes pretty good, but it's uh, very, very hard to, hard to chew. It's trout jerky. Mmm, yum yum. 
Let's see, Yash says, uh, that man doesn't be anyone. Cthulhu or any great one owns him. That will, Batman will probably beat them as well. So, Batman has beat death. <laughs> He's beat death, dark side, and pretty much everyone else has come up against. So, I would not count Batman out, considering that the editors will never let him lose. Ah. All right, let's see here. The thing with his face is that he has like a his face is like tiny compared to his head. But his face is lean. I gotta huh. I'm not far off, I can tell, but I can also tell that I am off. So
Tim Ray says, I think the camera went off. Oh, ah, shoot. What the heck? Uh, hold on. Hold on one second. Thank you very much, memory. I appreciate it. Let me see if I can reconnect this. How's that? Is it back on? I think it's back on. I think it's working. If you guys can see it, say yes. <laughs> Just let me know. Because it looks like it's okay on my end now. But I don't know why it went off. Spontaneous. Spontaneous boomerang on this stream. Only the best for my viewers. I was wondering why the the, the view count suddenly dropped from a thousand to uh, only two people. That explains it. That solves the mystery. mystery. Why is this not looking like William Johnny Lawrence Zabka? There's something, 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 something that's not...
Hey, one doom rabbit, how you doing? He says, sweep the leg. He says, man, I need to get back to traditional stuff. Spent too long on Photoshop. Yeah, well, you're, it's working for you. So, <laughs> I mean, if you guys don't know one doom rabbit, one doom rabbit is one of the best digital artists I've seen in, in a long time. Really, really fantastic and fast with the uh, portrait work and just realistic artwork in general. So. If you can, subscribe to One Doom Rabbit. And uh, if you're looking for artists, hire One Doom Rabbit because he is a phenomenal artist. Extremely fast and very good. So, glad to see you here. I'm actually flattered. <laughs> I'm flattered that One Doom Rabbit is here watching me draw. <laughs> Usually, I'm the one who watches him draw trying to get get tips and copy his work. <laughs> it's getting there slowly but surely. It's just uh this takes me time to get the proportions right on on these things. If this were drawn in quarters, I'd be losing. <laughs> it's uh, almost at the hour mark right now. So I have about, eh, about 70 minutes left. But it is actually starting to look like Johnny Lawrence. which is a good thing. Jeff Potts is lightning fast like a ninja. He is. He's like, Jeff, um, One Doom Rabbit is like a, he's a digital ninja. One Doom Rabbit says, I don't know, man. It's that last hour that things start working. Yeah, maybe, but, you know, it, it, for you, it, it works really, really well. It's, uh, I really enjoy watching you work. So, please, please, keep it up. Continue. Feed me, see more. Feed me. Let me see more of that awesome digital painting. This is Johnny Lawrence cleaned up. He's probably going on a date with one of uh, Danny LaRusso's ex-girlfriends. Or he might be going on a date with Danny LaRusso's wife. You never know. Because he is Johnny Lawrence. Another bite of this uh, salmon jerky. Mmm, yum. Now it's not malt liquor, but it's pretty good. Mmm. But it is tough. It's 
stuff is tough. I need some more water. I'll be right back. Cleaned up my area. It's like filled with these empty bottles of water. Ah, all right. Let me just that. Let's start working on Johnny's pie hole. See, one two rabbit says, I feel painting is easier because it's all values and then details, where this is details first. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm the exact opposite. I'm, I'm much better with details, like fine sort of details with, with a pencil than I am with values. And because my, uh, whenever I try to paint or do anything like that, even digital painting, I struggle with not making it end up muddy, you know? So. Um, I think being able to have a, a strong sense of values is, is pretty valuable. So something I need to, I definitely need to work on. stand up just so I get a better view of this. I know it's not. Wonder Rabbit says, uh, when I studied fine art, they kicked the neat drawing out of me. Oh, that kicked the neat drawing out of me. Now I find it hard to draw comic style stuffs. <laughs> the good thing about comics is that you don't really need to, 
I mean, I know this traditional comic book art, but there's so much comic book art nowadays, or I would say since the 90s, that's been painted that you don't really have to worry about, um, you know, having a traditional drawing style. When it comes to comic books, you, I mean, like I said, the stuff you do is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, and, and who, who else? So um, George um, Alexopoulos is another person who doesn't have a, a traditional comic book style, but his art is just, I love looking at it. It's just great. Very, very engaging. Something's, something's off. Something is off. But I'm not sure where it is. One dude Rebel says, thanks, dude. Typical artist here. We ate everything we do. Uh -huh, yeah, all right. You need to come say hi on Drunk Order Fan Edition. We have so many new artists. Yeah, I, I usually, like, stop to look for a few minutes every week. I, um, I just never have time to, to really hang out that much. But, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 last few weeks I've seen, like, tons of artists on there, so... I'm very happy to see that JD is still around. He's my favorite. He's 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 a fan favorite. JD, the uh, comic otaku. I think that's what he calls himself. <laughs> JD is hilarious. No worries, dude. He is. JD's the star of that show. I need to try to get back on it so I can so I can practice. <laughs> part part of the thing part of the um for me part of it is just that I know I would get crushed if I got if I went back on because I, I go on I look I just watch it yeah you know, um yeah you know, every Thursday and then I'm like holy mackerel these people are like <laughs> these people would destroy me in a two hour contest. <laughs> There's so many good artists on on uh, on Drone and Court Fan Edition now. Well, that's probably a good reason for me to jump on. It forced me to force me to exercise my my drawing muscles instead of slacking all the time. Need that, uh, need that kick in the pants.
I don't know, man. That show helped me get better. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It's like, but it's like, I don't. <laughs> it definitely helps you get better, but but it's like the pressure is like, but that again, it's it's that it's the same reason why it frustrates me is the exact same reason why I should do it, you know. And I know I know I should jump in and and and, uh, and keep keep at it. I'm just uh, ah. I get frustrated with myself seeing how poorly I do in only two hours. But like you said, it only helped me get better. I look back on my first stuff and the difference now is quite large. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't be surprised if you see me show up one day. I just can't promise when. It makes you rush, which could be, which can be a great thing. Yeah, I, it definitely. Um, I just don't like to rush. <laughs> it's like, it's like you know when your when your parents give you all these nasty vegetables to eat, and you know you should eat them because they're good for you. You just don't want to, because you just don't want to have to stomach them. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. That's the only way you get better by pushing your comfort zone. So, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. It's like, ah, this is me getting over my own stupid self. It's free art training, and I am not doing it, which is stupid. So, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep talking to myself, trying to convince myself to, to come back on. The worst thing though is uh, seeing Matthew Weldon like you know just sort of like hanging out in the in that fan, um, you know, doing fan drawings, and he does like three or four at a time. It takes everyone else to do one. <laughs> it's like stop it, Matt. <laughs> it's like in his spare time, he's just like whipping out awesome drawings. Like yeah, I'm busy drawing comic book pages, but I got I got a spare ten minutes to do a finished drawing of uh, of X, Y, and Z this week. Do five of them, just for fun. What do Rabbit say? He puts us all to shame, man. Yeah, he does. But it's because he uh, he's put in the work, so I need to do it too. Thanks. 
One Durao says, you've inspired me. I think I'll draw, I'll paint John Kreese. I love the last season of Cobra Kai. Yeah, I honestly, I've only watched the first season of Cobra Kai. Um, but I, I've been kind of keeping track of it. I just, um, I don't know. It was, um, I like I like the, the idea of it. I like the storylines and everything. It's just a little too... I can't, I can't even say it's too silly for me. It's just I can't. I, th I think ultimately what what stopped me from watching more of it is the just the martial arts is so cartoonishly bad on the show. I can't really watch it. I think that's it because like I watch, you know, I, I especially with uh, what's his name, Ralph Macchio, Daniel Larusso's karate. It's it's so awful. It's so terrible that I can't, I can't watch it. <laughs> so I watch, I end up watching clips on, uh, I end up, I watch clips on YouTube. Um, so I, I, I have a gist of what's going on with the show, but I just, I just haven't really watched it in full since the first season. But I enjoy it. I enjoy watching those clips, I, but I can't, I just can't force myself to spend hours of time invested in watching it. <laughs> it's not, is this not good? Is this not good enough? Is it, it if it we're like uh, into the Badlands or um, what was that one that um, the one that's uh, Warrior? I think it's called Warrior. It's just like set in the 1800s in Chinatown. If we were something like that, or the martial arts were, were that quality, I would watch it like every week but i can't i can't watch daniel russo just doing like really horrible like white belt level <laughs> martial arts <laughs> it's, it's just i mean everyone else on the show is like 
I, I, I can, yeah, I can stomach. I mean, I, I don't. Johnny Lawrence's stuff is cool. I like watching um, the kids do their stuff. That's kind of cool. But I can't, I, I can't buy, I can't buy Danny as Daniel Larusso as as a, as a martial arts master, <laughs> able to beat it, beat like beat up like four or five hockey players. No, no, sorry, <laughs> I cannot buy it. Yeah, Warrior. I need to watch. I need to watch more of that show. I think I've only seen like one or two episodes, but it's good. It's, I mean, martial arts is like, are like really, really good. I heard that's based on a on an idea, but oh yeah, yeah, it's it's based on an idea from uh, Bruce Lee, because I'm I, I think originally he came up with the idea for Kung Fu, the David Carradine series, um, and he wanted to uh, he wanted to star in it, but I guess they. Apparently, I don't know if this is just a rumor, but it's believable uh, that apparently they thought he was too Asian looking to star in it. So they, uh, they, they, I guess, stole his idea and uh, and hired David Carradine to play the, the main role, which is a shame, but... Alpha Proto says, yep, yep. Season 2 was the last season of Warrior, but it got picked up for a third by someone else. And yeah, you're right, right, it was Bruce Lee's idea, Bruce, Bruce Lee's thing, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a shame he died. The guy, had, the guy was, I mean, not just a great martial artist, he had so many great ideas that, uh, yeah, it's a pity. Bruce Lee died really young. Yeah, he was only, uh, I think he was only 32, wasn't he? When he died? He was very young. 32 or 36. I can't, rem I can't remember what it was. his exact age. Growing up, I thought he had more movies, but he didn't make a lot. As did Brandon. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon's death made me mad because that was completely avoidable you know I mean that was just like that was, that was like uh, stupid uh, Alec Baldwin's uh, shooting whether you know someone someone didn't do their job or whatever and he died as a result that was a shame well, at least we got the crow out of him. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, but it's true. The Crow was a great movie. Very, very good film. Saw the first three episodes of um, let's see, 
How pro says, I think he was 34. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know he was in his early 30s. Uh, Vimery says, lastly, it was it was, it has been discovered that Bruce Lee was a drug addict. Really? That's surprising because I know that he was extremely health focused, health conscious. Con conscious. So that's surprising that he would he may have been addicted to drugs. But still phenomenal performer and uh, creator. Um, one Doom Rabbit says, "Yeah, The Crow is such a good film." Uh, though I will always love Showdown and Little Tokyo. Is that the one where he, with um, with uh, what's his face? Um, it's uh, Brandon Lee and uh, what's his name from uh, Punisher and uh, but, um, uh, it's killing me. What's his name? Rocky Four. Um, yeah, Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren, thank you. Hey, thanks, Jeff Potts. I appreciate it. I never saw it. I saw clips from it. Um, again, on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Um, but I've never actually um, seen the whole movie. I'll have to check it out. And selfishly, I wish that uh, that his daughter made more films, but she hasn't. So, although she did, uh, I, I heard that she was the um, stunt. Um, she was a stand-in for um, the woman who fought uh, a, a, a Sako to Tano. Was that her? Was that actually her? Did she play the woman who, who fought Asako Tono in, um, in The Mandalorian? Was that Bruce Lee's daughter? It may have been. Check your Discord PMs. I don't have a Discord, um, Jeff Potts. My Discord PMs. Which which Discord? Because I, 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 I mean, I, I'm a member of, of several Discords, but um, is there like a general one? I'll check it. I'll check. I haven't been on Discord in like <laughs> in months, so <laughs> it might be packed. But I will check. But yeah, I, w I wish Bruce Lee's daughter did more stuff. That'd be cool. But I don't. Let's see. But yeah, I started. I, I watched the first three episodes of uh, Peacemaker. Um, that uh, sort of spinoff from the last uh, Suicide Squad movie starring John Cena. It is definitely not for children. <laughs> it's definitely rated R. But but that said, it, it's 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 um, if you can uh, kind of stomach it, it's uh, it's not for me. It's not so much the violence. It's, 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 there's there's a lot of kind of sex stuff in there. Um, but if you can, if you can deal with that. Um, it's it's pretty funny. Although last episode, I think was the best, just because there was no, it was there was no sort of X-rated stuff in it. So check it out if you if you're so inclined. If not, <laughs> don't watch it. Mike's Discord. Okay, I will check out Mike's Discord, and uh, and I will check my PMs.
How many how many episodes is it? Says uh, Alpha Proto. Um, yeah, there's only th- only three have come out. Three came out at the same time. Um, I think last last Friday when it premiered, they released the first three, and then after that, it's going to be an episode a week. So the fourth episode comes out um, this coming Friday. Wonder Rev says, yeah, I watched it. Thought it was going to be meh, but enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, the, the, the best part for me of that show is the opening sequence. If nothing else, um, I mean, the, watch the opening sequence on uh, on YouTube. Um, you know, it's, uh, I guess you just type in Peacemaker opening. It's just, it's so funny because it's so wacky. It's just, it's just a really, it's just very, very humorous, very kind of lighthearted. And uh, I can't. It's good. Just, just, I mean, just watch the opening. But again, if you're, if you're kind of squeamish or sort of iffy about, especially like sex, you know, don't. You probably shouldn't watch it. Uh, I, I was, I was surprised that it had that much stuff in it. I was like, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is way, this is way more R-rated than, uh, than Suicide Squad was. <laughs> when do rabbits is laughing? Seriously, I was like looking around, hope my wife didn't walk in the room. I was like, oh, oh, oh shouldn't. <laughs> hope nobody sees me watching this. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. I keep trying to figure out whether or not uh, his eagle is CGI or a real bird. I kind of think that it's it has to be CGI and a puppet. It can't be a real bird, but it looks real. Now, I, I, I think that's that's the special effect I'm most most impressed with on that show, um, because uh, Peacemaker has this eagle as his sidekick, and uh, it's really uh, it's really pretty <laughs> pretty well done. Alpha Pro says, "Wow, your wife won't let you watch it. I thought you were supposed to share shows with, with your wife. Um, my wife would probably let me watch it, but it's not something she would really. <laughs> she, I don't know. She probably wouldn't have a problem with, with me watching it, but but I, I would be embarrassed to be wa- to, for her to find me watching certain scenes in it. Um, let me put it that way. <laughs> the show overall is fine, but there's." There are, are a number of scenes in the first three episodes where it's like, it's not, it's not family friendly. <laughs> it's not, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty hard R um, in, in several scenes. So. My wife has been on a, on a the Bionic Woman binge of late. What? The one with uh, the original one from the seventies. That's a. That's a. I won't say surprising, but that's very um, unusual. I haven't seen the Bionic Woman probably since the seventies. 
I love Six Million Dollar Man. The Bionic one was like, eh. I don't know. It was okay, but <laughs> I think I just saw just like a copy of the Six Million Dollar Man plus plus at the same time, you know, Wonder Woman was on, so I was, you know, it didn't it didn't compare. <laughs> That's cool. She's watching it. I I, I haven't wa um I got on a real um strong like uh, kick kick of watching uh, or binge watching the Rifleman, the old show from the 1950s. Um, I'd never seen it before. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd heard of it, but it was it turned out to be so good. It was such a good show that I just got hooked on it, and I was just like watching it like an episode a night. And I, you know, I finished the first season, I, I, but I never, I should go back and, and keep watching it because it's, it's such a good show. Surpri I mean, I shouldn't say surprisingly, but it, it's, it's really well done. Every episode is like a, it's like a morality tale, but it's, it's not, it's, but it's, it's, it's well done. It's not like simplistic or childish. It's like, it's good. It's a good show. Um, Jeff Pond says, yeah, the seventies reruns. Yeah. She was on a rifleman kick last summer. Yeah. I, I got into it when I get into rifleman, probably, probably last summer sometime for some reason. And I just, I was just curious. It's like, Oh man, I've, I've heard of this show. I wonder what it's like. And I, and I, and I, and I kind of like Westerns, you know, I, I love the Lone Ranger and, uh, you know, I like Bonanza and, you know, Big Valley and stuff. So I decided to check it out and it was just like, Whoa, this, <laughs> What the? And this show is really good. <laughs> I think what I like most about it is that it's it's a it doesn't talk down to you, and but it's still a show that you can watch with your kids, and it, it just has really really strong values um, sort of incorporated in it. Um, again, without being sort of preachy or or swarmy or or stupid. I mean, it's 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 just an excellent show. If, if you guys haven't, it's, I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen it. Since it hasn't been, you know, it's, the show's almost you know 100 years old. It's almost 80 years old. But um, if you haven't done it already, you should check out the Rifleman. If you have like a smart TV, I, I watch it on uh, what's it called? It's called ah, um, uh, I can't remember the the. Um, the station, not it's not a station. It's like a an app. It's an app, and uh, shoot, I just type it. Type type it into Google. Google it. See what app is uh has it available. Um, but it, it like I said, it's, it's a really good show. I recommend it to everybody. It's not Tubi, uh, Jeff Potts. It's um. Dag nabbit. Um, give me one second. Let me check my computer. Okay, it's on Film Rise. The, the name of this of the uh, app is called Film Rise. So uh, if you look that up on your smart TV or on uh, on your computer, Google it. Film Rise, F I L M R I S E. That's where uh, that's the app where you can find the Rifleman.
Oh, one dude rap says I grew up on Sharp. Yeah, I used to watch that all the time with uh with my uh, mom. Sharp's Rifles. Is that what you're talking about? That was a great series. Love that series with uh. Oh, I'm getting old. My brain's turned to mud. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the guy who started in Sharp Rifles. He's been in everything. Lord of the Rings. Um, he always ends up dying. But Sharp Rifles, great job. Seems I'll have to take a look at Rifleman. Yeah, you should want to grab it. Sean Bean. Thank you, Sean Bean. Yeah, yeah that's the one show he didn't die in. <laughs> But I mean, I think that was the first time I'd I'd seen Sean Bean in the uh, the Sharp Rifles uh, series on uh, on PBS. It's very good. So much good TV out there. It seems to be less of it now. But uh, I guess, I guess I, there probably still is good TV. But I'm, I don't find that much good TV on regular t television. I find good television. I find good TV on um i guess like the uh some of the some of the apps some of the services the streaming services have really good tv but um network tv rarely i rarely find really good stuff on network tv i mean i even like uh, uh i don't know i mean it's there's still some good stuff on on pbs but it seems to be a lot lot less good stuff <laughs> 22 rabbits that said that sharp is the only time that uh sean bean didn't die on the show <laughs> i think the wife must start chuck connor's yes he did oh wow you met chuck connor's son roscoe that's cool very neat yeah this the, the son the guy who played the son on the rifleman he died this uh last year almost a year ago um unfortunately he had, he had dementia and he, and he passed away there was a movie called clean skin where sean bean didn't die yeah, I think I saw another movie where where he didn't die, but I can't remember it off the top of my head because pretty much every movie he <laughs> I've seen him in, he's he, he's ended up kicking the bucket. So, but he's a great actor. Um, PBS has all creatures great and small season, second season right now. It's a good show. Honestly, yes, second season. Yeah, I, I, mm, I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> I, I don't know if I should tell you my reservations. Um, I, uh, I was a big fan of the original All Creatures Great and Small back in the seventies, and I really enjoyed it. I like the new All Creatures Great and Small. It's okay. I think they. I don't like. I don't like a lot of the changes they've made with it. Most of the characters are fine. Um, I like. 
I kind of have to like let it go and just accept that it's a different adaptation. It's a, it's a it's a modern. It's a it's a it's a clearly a a. 2021 22 adaptation of the story and it's based on a real act a real doctor i mean he, the guy james harriet was was you know he wrote the the book he wrote was pretty autobiographical you know story about him you know becoming a, a vet and meeting his wife and everything so when they start the, when the new series starts to skew from that and and change things i i i, I kind of don't like it um and there are there are a lot of things that that sort of you know not a lot a few things that sort of annoyed me so. but i like uh you know i like i like uh the depiction of um of james uh you know his wife um you know i like um I like the new Tristan. I think he's really good. I like the um, the guy who plays um, um, Siegfried. He's not as crazy as the original Siegfried, or the, apparently the, uh, the 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 actual Siegfried. Apparently, the guy who the, the actual Siegfried in real life was crazy. He was kind of nuts, and and the one in the new in the new version of the show is very is, is pretty calm in uh, in comparison. So, um, but, uh, Mrs. Hudson, I, I, she, I don't understand why they hired someone who's so young and attractive to play Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson was like an old woman, uh, you know, and she was portrayed as such in the, in the original, uh, the original series. But in this new series, she looks like, she looks like, um, Siegfried's wife. She looks like she, you know, she's obviously young enough to play Siegfried's girlfriend so whenever i see them interacting it, I'm, I'm like it's it's a different sort of tension than he would have if he were sort of playfully bickering with with an older woman you know a woman old enough to be his mother and that, now she's you know now she's young enough to be his wife or his girlfriend that's it's, it's, it's it, it, to me it gives it, it's a weird dynamic I, and I, I don't i don't really like it although i i do like i like the actress playing mrs hudson i mean i think she's great i think i and i i i, I like sort of the little storylines or the writing for her um that you know because she is so young um they're able to write new storylines that you know obviously aren't in the book because the the, the actual woman was no was an old lady but i i like those stories the, the one thing that really annoys me or bothers me about uh, the new one, though, the new uh, All Creatures Green Small, is they keep on shoehorning in this character that they that they created for the show uh, and introduced in the uh, in the Christmas special, and it's an old black woman, and <laughs> the reason why it annoys me is because she's married to a to a white man. And they've been married for like 50 years in this village in England in the 1930s. So they've been married since what the night since the 1880s and in England, and nobody thinks anything of it. And they have kids, and they're all act like everything is fine and dandy. And I'm like, no, no, that didn't happen. And and they and and the makers of the new version admit that this this woman never existed and they just created her to throw in diversity into the show but i to me it like stands out every time i see her she just stands out like a sore thumb and it's just like stop trying to shoehorn this woman who would not be in who, who didn't exist in real life she's not in a book she's not she's not she was never a part of james harriet's life so why are you shoehorning her and a relationship that would not be looked on favorably you know in the 1880s you know through the time that this show is it, it's just kind of annoying to me so I, I don't i don't like 
anachronisms like that in period pieces whenever you know when, when i watch shows it's like it, it to me it just brings me out of the show and just reminds me that i'm not watching people from the 1930s i'm watching actors from 2022 you know putting in their own you know their own viewpoints about stuff into a period piece and i and i i watch period pieces because i because i, I don't want to see 21st century sort of memes or values or opinions you know if i wanted to see that stuff i'd watch i watch you know shows set today you know if i want if i watch a show set in the 1800s i want to see 1800 values if i see, watch a show from the from the 1500s i want to see people act like they would act in the, in the 1500s i don't want to see people in the dressed up in 1500s cosplay you know acting like it's 2021 so <laughs> Alpha Pro says Siegfried, the guy with the white tiger. Yeah, that's Siegfried. He, he was a different type of vet. So, <laughs> I really enjoyed the Great British uh, Baking Show too. Yeah, yeah, that's a great show. I love that. Uh, Roscoe says never saw the '70s version of the show, but grew up with the books. Oh, you should watch it, Roscoe. Um, where can you watch that? I think it's on, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, I think it's on Amazon Prime because I watched them very recently. Um, after the uh, the new version came out, I wanted to go back and watch the original. So I think the original All Creatures Great and Small is on Amazon Prime. Um, if it's not on Amazon Prime, it, it, it might, it's, if it's not on there, it's on BritBox, which is another streaming service. So uh, check those out. Um, Roscoe says, same with Poldark. Good show, never saw the old one. Oh, I, I, I watched the, I love the old Poldark. I loved it. And I think I loved it so much that I refused to watch the new one because I didn't want it to mess with my memories of the original Poldark. The original Poldark from the 70s was really good. Um, so I would, again, I recommend it. Uh, Alpha Pro says, if the show is on Netflix or Amazon, they, they have diversity quotas to the show. I know, and I hate that. It's so stupid. They have to have so many points of, ex of representation in their, in their shows, and it, and it ruins the show because it, just, it means that they cannot make period pieces anymore without throwing in characters that probably would not be there, you know, in the original. I mean, what they, if they had Romeo and Juliet, would, would the Capulets be black now? It's, 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 to me, it's just stupid. It, it makes no sense. It's a good way to, to destroy uh, stories. You know, just ha have the stories be as they were written. Don't start messing with them. Or they won't pick up the show. Yeah, they're stupid. There's a lot, there's a lot of great stories they won't be picking up then. Uh, I feel this should be, should be your next pick, <laughs> James Harriet. <laughs> I don't I don't know if anyone really knows what James Harriet looks like. I guess they do. Well, no, I don't know if they do. They know what the actors look like, but I've noticed it seems to be a bit of a trend with British period pieces lately to have a black person from one of the British colonies married to a Brit just to have diversity. Yeah, that's stupid because they they would be uh they'd be ostracized in real life, you know, if it was said back then. But they never they, they make they whitewash history and try to make it look like that sort of that sort of uh, those sort of relationships were were perfectly acceptable, and and I I hate that sort of whitewashing of history. You can have it, but show the consequences of it. You know, it's uh, you can't just ignore that and pretend that that uh, that you know racism didn't happen by uh, you know just putting two you know. An attractive interracial couple together. It's like, oh, see, it's, it's perfectly fine. Everybody was fine with it. It's like, uh, no, they weren't. So if you're gonna have that in in your in your show, you better show some uh, some consequences to it. <laughs> They'll make Othello a ginger. Yeah, well, actually, that's yeah, that probably wouldn't bother me because they, they've they've had so many white actors play Othello in the past. <laughs> you might as well have him be a ginger at this point. Um, <laughs> That should be pretty funny. Wonder Brad says, "This is so weird." Yeah, <laughs> that's that's one that's one of my pet peeves though with uh with films. It's like I, I don't I don't like 
obvious anachronisms. So whenever my mom uh, recommends something, said, so, oh, you should watch this show. I think she recommended, what was it? Um, some, something tin, some San, Sander tin? Was that? No, it wasn't. What was it called? It was this. It was this show. She also recommended the show. This. Uh, this. This. Uh, this uh, I guess it was a series based on the life of Anne Boleyn. And I said, I'm not watching that because Anne Boleyn is played by a black woman. It's, it, 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 Anne Boleyn was not black. She was. She was uh, Henry the Eighth's wife. It's like she. <laughs> it's like I. I. I cannot. I cannot support that sort of. Uh, Revisionist history, I, I, and I, it just makes me, yeah, kind of makes me sick. So, I imagine there'll be a lot of shows in the future that I will be avoiding <laughs> with these uh, diversity quotas. Uh-oh. I've wasted a lot of time talking. It's 11.52. I only have about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'll keep working on this. And uh, I'll, actually, these will be posted uh, online, the finished artwork, next week. So keep an eye out for it. If you haven't already, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are down below. Follow me there, and you'll see me. you see the finished artwork to this and the, uh, all my other stuff posted on there, um, you know, in the coming, uh, coming days. Lawrence Fishburne played a fellow. Cool, cool, cool. I will probably say, she wasn't black? No, she wasn't. I know, it's shocking. It's shocking that the Queen of England wasn't black back in the 1500s. Hard as that is to believe, she wasn't. Um, what was it, the 1400s? When was, when was Henry VIII, um, when was he, uh, king? Can't remember. Um, Lars Fischburn played Othello. I was tempted to get the video. I want to see him put on sunglasses and do a red, <laughs> red pill, blue pill soliloquy. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one dude rabbit. Yeah, let me know when you post that that crease pick. You probably already finished it already. In the time I was, I've been jabbering. He's just been like, whoop. There we go. Bam. Done. I learned all my history from movies and TV, <laughs> so I'm in trouble. Yeah, you are. Yeah, that movies and television, especially nowadays, is a terrible place to learn history from. But I think that's a that's a large reason why they do it. They, I mean, I think a lot of people want to rewrite history. You know, make it this sort of ridiculous fantasy land let's see Ah, okay. Uh, 1509 to 1547. So, 16th century. 
1500s. I'd love to call one of your portraits someday, sometime, dude, for fun. Go ahead. They're all on my website. Or not on my website. Well, no, they're on my website, but also on my social media. So if you just, you know, click down on my Twitter and uh, have at it. <laughs> I'd love to see what you do with it. You can only make it look better, so... <laughs> I'll pick one. Cool. What a collab. One Doom Rabbit, Jiminy, Jiminy Rabbit. <laughs> one Doom Cricket. Oh, One Doom Cricket, Jiminy Rabbit. <laughs> like I said, he'll, he'll only make my stuff look better, so it's to my benefit that he colors my work. <laughs> I'm doing it purely for selfish reasons. <laughs>
Hey, Kevin Cass, how you doing? Good seeing you. Hope you're doing well. You are coming in at the tail end of the stream. I'm about to close up shop. I'll be back tomorrow, though. I'm going to be drawing uh, John Kreese from uh, Cobra Kai tomorrow. So make sure to uh, come on back on Wednesday to check that out. I'll be finishing this drawing off stream. But, uh, yeah, I'll give it another shot to try to finish in two hours tomorrow. At least tomorrow, I won't be, I won't have to uh, shut it down after two hours because I'll have, uh, I'll be able to, you know, sort of draw out my uh, my remaining hour of Streamyard time because of the way Streamyard works. I'll just, uh, I'll be able to live stream, you know, for ten hours if I wanted to, but I won't do that. <laughs> But tomorrow will probably will be more than two hours tomorrow. <laughs> Kevin Cass says, go Johnny, get him a body bag. <laughs> no mercy. Kevin Cass says, looks good, thanks. Need to do Johnny justice. He was he was done wrong in the Karate Kid, so it's time that someone finally did him justice. I got it. I'll keep working on them. It's 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 getting there. It's um, it's I mean it's it's close. It's just uh, certain things that I need to straighten out. I'll straighten it. I'll straighten this out off stream. But it's uh, two hours is up. Uh, I gotta I gotta save some time for tomorrow for my monthly allotment from uh, StreamYards runs out. But everybody, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for putting up with my gripes, my sort of, uh, you know, complaining and hang-ups with uh, TV shows nowadays. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me company. There's six people here. Everybody, everybody shows up at the end. At the end. Why can't, you, why can't I get six people half an hour into the show? That's okay. I will take whoever shows up to watch. I am more than happy to for you for you to be here. So thank you. Um, <laughs> more dude Rabbit says uh, looks great. You would have won D and Q. F E. Eh, I doubt that because <laughs> you would have had a complete painted picture of Johnny done by now. So, but yeah, everybody, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to uh, subscribe. Please make sure to hit the bell for notifications of future videos because I will be back tomorrow and also on Friday to uh, to draw John Kreese from uh, Cobra Kai and then Mr. Miyagi from uh, The Karate Kid on Friday. Okay? You guys, you take care. Uh, Roscoe Davis says uh, Cobra Kai is so much better than it has any right to be. Yeah, I know. It is. It's like it's really good. It's a very entertaining show. If you, if you like The Karate Kid back in the 80s, it, it's like – it's just a, a – jolt of like awesome nostalgia you know because uh all the coolness uh, it, it can't really call it coolness because because it's, it's kind of dorky it's kind of a dorky show but it but it's just but but that's what makes it cool it's 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 cool and the fact that they embrace the the the, the dopiness of the karate kid that's what makes it cobra kai cool so um yeah it's fantastic it's a great show um i think the overarching message is of being misunderstood isn't reason to lash out as a bully is timely yeah definitely yeah very cool especially with that new kid that little a little black kid i can't remember his name what is it kenny is that his name 
Um, I mean, just this transformation from like sort of, I mean, you sort, I mean, you obviously feel for him, but then he 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 turns into like a into a bully himself. It's just like, oof, whoa, dang, it's kind of scary. Especially that scene where he's he's beating on uh, on uh, Daniel's son in the locker room. It's like, whoa, this kid is. This kid has gone to the dark side. He's he's become a Sith. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's eighties badass. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that one scene where um, where uh, what's his name? Um, ah, oh, can't remember his name. He was he, Miguel. Is that his name? Miguel. The, um, he 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 was the uh, kid that uh that Johnny was training in the first season. Miguel was fighting Hawk. And he, he's doing like a spinning like back kick and his, his back breaks. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. Oh, but good. It's a good show. <laughs> so yeah, so come back tomorrow and I'll I'll, I'll continue with uh, with John Kreese. Um, he'll be right here next to Danny, where next to uh, next to Johnny where it belongs. Okay. Well, guys, you take care. I'll talk to you later.